Section 5.2 is about adding and subtracting rational expressions. And this works a lot like how you would add and subtract fractions. Because with fractions, you can add or subtract the numerators as long as you have a common denominator. So, for example, if you had, let's say, 3 tenths plus 4 tenths, then you can just add the 3 and the 4 together because you have the common denominator of 10, right? And you would say that then this is 7 tenths. But then if you had, I don't know, let's say one fifth plus one half, there you'd have to get the common denominator, right? And so then what you would end up with is um, it's 10. So you'd multiply the one fifth by two over two and you multiply the one half by five over five and you'd end up with, and I'm getting ahead of myself. That's two over 10 first and five over 10 second. All right, so it'll be two over 10 plus five over 10, which ends up being seven over 10. So that's basically the idea. Um, it's very similar to that, except that it's not just integers, right? You have polynomials and, and you know, like binomial factors and things like that, but it's that concept. So like with number one and number two, we've already got common denominator. So then like with one, you can just add the numerators and with two, you can subtract them. So with number one, I'm going to put the two numerators in parentheses just to kind of emphasize what they are. So I guess just so I can point at them and say, there's the first numerator and there's the second one, especially that 18, that looks weird in parentheses by itself. And then that would be all over X minus six. And as far as the addition goes, those parentheses don't really do anything, right? Really, they are just there to say, here's the first numerator, here's the second one. But then if I get rid of the parentheses and I've got x squared minus 9x plus 18 over x minus 6, then the next thing to check is, can you cancel anything, right? Because it does say add or subtract, then simplify. So we should see if we can simplify. Well, does that top factor? Um, pair of factors of 18 to add up to negative 9. Yeah, that'll be uh, negative 6 and negative 3. So x minus 6 times x minus 3 over x minus 6. And we can cancel, right? We could cancel the x minus 6 in, on the bottom with one of the x minus 6's, or, or with, the, with the one on the left, sorry, um, that's on the top. And then we'll just have x minus 3 is the answer. So x minus 3, and that's what we're going to end up with here. It's not the greatest looking x, but that's, that's what that is. All right, so then number 2 is pretty similar because we've already got a common denominator of x plus 3. Um, here with the subtraction, I think it actually does help to have the parentheses around the two numerators, especially the second one. This is the one thing you got to watch out for with the addition and subtraction, is when you're subtracting, um, make sure you distribute the subtraction through that second numerator. So just to be safe, I am going to put them in parentheses again. So we'll have 7x squared plus 20x minus, and then in parentheses, x plus 6. And this is all over x plus 3. And then if I rewrite this without parentheses, that first numerator is just going to look the same. So 7x squared plus 20x, but then I got to distribute the negative through the second one, so it'll be minus x minus 6, All right? So the important thing is the sign of that 6, but that needs to be a minus, because that subtraction sign needs to be distributed all the way through it. And then it looks like we can combine terms a little bit, right? 20x minus x, that's going to be 19x, so we're going to get 7x squared plus 19x minus 6 over x plus 3. And then that actually does factor. So you would need a 7x and an x to get the 7x squared. Right? It's the only way to do it since 7 is a prime number. And let's see, we need to get a 19 in the middle where one of these is positive and one's negative. Since we're getting a negative 6 as the constant on the end. Um, let's see, it looks like what we're going to need is this. 
right? Since then, outer, you'd get 21x, inner is minus 2x. Yep, that's 19. And, oh, look, we can cancel stuff, too, because we've got an x plus 3 in the top and an x plus 3 in the bottom. So we can go ahead and cancel those out. And it looks like what we're going to get as a final answer is 7x minus 2. So once again, that cleaned up very nicely since we were able to cancel at the end. But um, since we already have a common denominator, uh, the main thing to be careful with here is just that when you subtract, make sure you distribute the subtraction sign through that second numerator. Um, number three is kind of on the fence between this part of the section and then the next part where you actually do have to get the common denominator. Um, there are two ways to do this. I'm going to run through both. The way the book does it is not what I would think of, um, and so therefore I guess it's not the one that's intuitive to me, but it might be the one that feels easier. I would think that this would vary from person to person. So I'll show you what the book does, then I'll show you what I do. Um, they'll get you to the same place, and then just whichever one looks easier, I'm assuming that's the technique that you'd probably stick with, right? They both work. So what we've got here is these two denominators are almost the same, except that if you look at that second one, it looks like the first one, except the signs are reversed. Right? It's got a negative A instead of an A. It's got a 2 instead of a negative 2. Okay? Well, there are a couple of ways that you can handle this. So the book way is... So we're going to leave the first one alone because that one's already written in standard form in the denominator, the A minus 2. Right? you got the degree 1 term going first. Um, the other one... Is there a way that you could flip the signs? Well, yeah, you could factor out a negative one. So they would say to factor a negative one out of that denominator, and then you'll have negative two plus a multiplied by that negative one. Um, but negative two plus a is the same thing as a minus two, right? If you flip the order, if you just write the terms in the opposite order. So then this will be five a over a minus two plus 9 over negative 1 times a minus 2. Um, then the next step is the step that to me does not feel intuitive because right now the denominators don't exactly match, but when you have a factor of negative 1, because um, you have um, if you have a negative like on the top or the bottom of the fraction, you can bring it out front. Um, it's kind of like that, except that instead of bringing it out front, you just move it up to the top. And that is true, right? Like negative 1 divided by 3 and 1 divided by negative 3 are the same thing, right? They're both negative 1 third. And you kind of use that idea. So then you bring that negative 1 up. And you'd have negative 1 times 9 in the numerator over a minus 2. And now you've got the common denominator. And so if you add the numerators, you'll get 5a plus negative 9, or just 5a minus 9 over a minus 2. And that doesn't simplify any further, and that is the answer. Um, so that's one way to do it. The thing that, for me personally, and maybe it's just because I didn't learn it this way initially, but the thing that um, doesn't feel intuitive to me is the part where you bring the negative 1 up from the denominator to the numerator. Like, I can look at it and go, yeah, that's a legal move, you can do it, but I don't know that I would think of that reflexively. Um, so I'll show you what I would do. I'll put this in a different color. I'll make this brown. So the alternative, and I guess starting over at the beginning where we've got the 5a over a minus 2 plus 9 over 2 minus a. I guess you start with the same thing where you end up recognizing that the two denominators look pretty similar, except they just have opposite signs. So in order to get an a minus 2 in the denominator of the second one, what I would do is I would multiply the top and bottom by a negative 1. So what I would do is this. So I have 9 over 2 minus a times negative 1 over negative 1. So what I'm doing there is, since I'm going to multiply that denominator by negative 1, I'm going to flip its signs. But ultimately, this expression, the negative 1 over negative 1, that's just 1. So I'm just kind of multiplying by 1, where 1 is kind of written to give me the thing that I want, right? Which is where I can flip the signs around. Um, but if you're multiplying by 1, that doesn't change the value of the expression. 
right? You can always do that. You can multiply by negative one over negative one. You can multiply by 10 over 10. You can multiply by, you know, 63 over 63 if you want to, right? I mean, multiplying by one does not change the value of the expression. So you can do this. Um, and to me, that feels easier. So then let's see this first one. It's just going to stay the same 5a over a minus two and then plus. And now if I, um, I guess if I multiply numerators and denominators, I'll have nine times negative one over two minus a times negative one. Um, so let's see, that's five over a minus two plus negative nine over, and if I just distribute the negative one, I'd have negative two plus a, but negative two plus a is the same thing as a minus two. So I'm just gonna rewrite it like that. So five a over a minus two plus negative nine over a minus two. And you can see we're gonna get the same answer. We're gonna get five a minus nine over a minus two. So either way will work. Um, whichever one seems like it makes more sense or seems easier, I guess stick with that one generally. Um, but either way will get you to the right place. Um, and the way that I think about it is more like what you do with a common denominator. Um, so maybe that's why the book does it the way they do it, um, where they kind of duck around that procedure. But where you multiply by one sort of creatively, like how I have the negative one over negative one, that's the kind of thing you do to get a common denominator, right? Like even if, if I scroll up for a second to where I have written out like way up here in the corner, this one with the one fifth uh, plus one half, to get to the two over 10 plus five over 10, to get the two over 10, it's multiplying one fifth by two over two. To get the five over 10, it's multiplying one half by five over five. So it's the same concept down here when you multiply by negative one over negative one. Um, but either way, like whatever works, I guess stick with that. All right, next thing is least common denominators. They're certainly coming up enough, right? And um, so now we're actually gonna do them. Um, so just by definition, um, the least common denominator would be the essentially least common multiple of your two denominators um, or three denominators because you could have three expressions where it's like a plus and then a minus or something. So of whatever denominators you have, the least common multiple, that's your least common denominator. Um, so how do you find the least common denominator? Um, well, basically what you want to do is um, you want to have your denominators broken up into factors. And then for each factor that shows up in any one of the denominators um, or in multiple denominators, you want the highest power that shows up. Um, and then you take all those highest powers of those factors and you multiply them together and that's your least common denominator. And I think this is easier just to see from doing a couple of least common multiples and then we can kind of like build up to where we have rational expressions. So first, if you just have a couple of numbers, I think if you have a couple of numbers, most people don't do it that way. Most people would kind of start thinking of the multiples of those numbers and start thinking, all right, with eight, we have eight, then 16 and 24, then 32. And with six, we'd have six and 12 and 18 and 24, right? That kind of thing. So like mentally, I think this is what most people think about. So we have multiples of eight, which would be eight, 16, 24, 32, and so forth. And then for multiples of six, we'd have six, then 12, then 18, then 24, and so forth. And then you go, ah, the 24, that's the smallest one that shows up in both lists. So you go, there's a 24 and there's a 24. So it looks like the least common multiple is 24. All right, that's one way of doing it. And for numbers, that's gonna work out fine. But for what we're gonna do a little bit later, um, what I think will work better is if we say, so or, eight is, if you write eight as like with its prime factorization, it's two times two times two or two to the third. And then six is two times three. If you write that with its prime factorization. Um, and I guess if you wanna make this super explicit as to what's going on, um, we could say that this is two to the third times three to the zero, right? Because 
If you have something with zero power, it wouldn't show up in the factorization. This one would be two to the first times three to the first. And then you would just want to take the largest powers that show up. So the least common multiple, um, well, the highest power of two that shows up is three. So we would need a two to the third. The highest power of three that shows up is one. So three to the first. Two to the third is eight. So this is eight times three and it's 24. So you get exactly the same thing. Um, the thing that's in maroon on the right side with the exponent of zero and the exponents of one, if, if that doesn't help, you don't then don't use it, I suppose. Um, if you can do it right off the two to the third and then the two times three and just say, oh, the highest power of two is three, highest power of three is one, and just go to that, um, that's fine too. But I figured if this was something that, um, if you haven't seen it in a while, then it might be worth it to have that maroon thing too. All right, next is now what if we have monomials? All right, well then if we're gonna factor those, I think that's probably the best thing to do first. So 10 a b to the fourth c squared. Uh, 10 is two times five, written with its prime factors. And then we're gonna have an a, and we're gonna have a b to the fourth, and we're gonna have a c squared. And then four a cubed b squared, um, four as a prime factorization is two times two or two squared, and then times a to the third times b squared. All right, and then here, um, I guess I can do that maroon thing again. Um, it looks sort of intense for these actually, um, because here this would be two to the first times five to the first times a to the first times b to the fourth times c squared. And then the one underneath would be two squared times five to the zero, right? Since there's no five in there, times a cubed times b squared times c to the zero, since there's no c in there. Um, but either way, I think we can get there pretty quick now. We can say that the least common multiple of those two monomials Highest power of two that shows up is two squared. Highest power of five that shows up is just five to the first. And then after that, you're just picking the biggest exponents. Right, you got an a to the first and an a cubed. So you need the bigger one, the a cubed. b to the fourth and b squared. The bigger one is b to the fourth. And then c squared just shows up in one of them. So we're gonna need that. And then if we multiply that out, that's, let's see, four times five, so it's 20. So it's 20 a cubed b to the fourth c squared. And that's our least common multiple. All right. Um, and so really with these, most of the work is just with the parts that are the integers, right? With the 10 and the 4 to figure out that the least common multiple of those is 20. Because then after that, with the variables, you're basically just picking the largest exponent, right? Like an A and an A cubed, pick the A cubed. B to the fourth and B squared, pick the B to the fourth. That kind of thing. Um, but you can always itemize it all the way out and do it from there too. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then number six, now we've got trinomials. So we're gonna have to factor them. So x squared plus two x minus three. If we factor that, that's gonna be x plus three times x minus one. And then x squared minus x minus 12. If we factor that, we're gonna get x minus four times x plus three. All right, so there are three factors that show up, um, right? Like three of the binomials that are parts of those two products. Um, one of them shows up twice, the x plus three, but it never shows up with a power larger than one. So if we're gonna get the least common multiple, yeah, we do need that, right? We need the x plus three, but we also need any other factors that are just showing up in there. So we have an x minus one in the first, in the first um, factorization and then an x minus four in the second. So it's this, right? It's x plus three times x minus one times x minus four. Those are the factors that show up and they never show up to a higher power. None of them are squared or anything like that. They're just to the first power. So that's your least common multiple. All right, so now we're getting up to where I think we can have actual rational expressions. So with seven and eight, you kind of do what we were just doing. Um, so you want the least common denominator um, 
where uh, the denominator is in 7 or 12 xy cubed and then 14x squared y squared. Sometimes you can do the number just kind of by looking at it, like with the 12 and the 14, what the least common multiple would be. It's a hard one to see. It's 84. Um, and I guess it's easier to see if you have the factorization there. So I guess that's what we're going to do. So for the 12 xy cubed, if we were going to write out its factorization, so 12 is 4 times 3, but 4 is 2 squared. So with the prime factorization, that's going to be 2 squared times 3. And then we're going to have an x. Now we're going to have a y cubed. And then 14x squared y squared. That's 2 times 7 for the 14. And then times x squared times y squared. So then our least common denominator, if we look at what we've got in our factorizations, highest power 2 that shows up is 2 squared, because we've got a 2 squared and then a 2 to the first. Then we've got a 3 to the first, and the, the first one, we've got a 7 to the first and the second one. Um, highest power of x is x squared. Highest power of y is y cubed. So it should be that, which, let's see, so this will be 21 times 4, which is 84, um, times x squared times y cubed. There's our least common denominator right there. <clears throat> okay, then number 8, um, similar to number 6, we've got trinomials that we're going to have to factor. So first denominator, we've got r squared plus 9r plus 8. And if you factor that, it's going to be r plus 8 times r plus 1, right? A pair of factors of 8 that add up to 9. Uh, then the second one, we've got r cubed plus 2r squared plus r. That's got a common factor of r, so we can factor that out. We'll be left with r squared plus 2r plus 1 multiplied by that r. But the thing inside the parentheses is a perfect square. It's r plus 1 squared. So that's r times r plus 1 squared. All right, so then the least common denominator. Um, well, we're going to need uh, our three factors that show up are r, r plus 1, and r plus 8. So r, it just shows up to the first power. r plus 1 shows up in both, and the highest power is 2, because there's an r plus 1 squared in that second factorization. So we need r plus 1 squared. And then we're going to need the r plus 8 that's in the first one. So something like that. I guess the order that you end up um, with the factors written in doesn't matter too much since they're all multiplied together. But you do need the r plus 1 to be squared, right? Because there's a squared r plus 1 in that um, second factorization. Okay, now I think we're up to the point where we can actually do the addition and subtraction. Most of the work is really just getting the least common denominator. Right, because we saw what number one and number two were like when you already have the common denominator, then you just kind of fly through it. So that is most of the work. All right, so what I'm going to do with this one, with number nine, is I guess I've got space up here where I can say that 6r, um, well, 6 is 2 times 3 written with prime factors, so 2 times 3 times r, and then 9r squared. Um, 9 is 3 squared, right? So 3 squared times r squared. Looks like that's what we've got here. So based on that, our least common denominator should be, well, we've got a 2 to the first power in the first one, um, then a 3 squared in the second, and then highest power of r is r squared. So it looks like this is going to be 18r squared. So then what we have to do is we have to rewrite both of these expressions so we get an 18r squared in the denominator. So what we're going to do, so I'm going to have 5 over 6r, and I need to get an 18r squared in the bottom. So I need the 6 to be multiplied by 3, and I need the r to be multiplied by another r. All right, so then what we're going to have is we're going to multiply by 3r over 3r, because that'll give us the 16r squared on the bottom. And then plus 7 over 9r squared. And almost, right? We need an 18r squared, not a 9r squared. So we just need that 9 to get multiplied by 2. So then that means we're going to have to multiply by 2 over 2. And that should do it. 
So let's see what we got. If we multiply these here, um, we're going to end up with 15r over 18r squared plus 14 over 18r squared. And then there's not really a whole lot left, right? You just have to add the numerator. So 15r plus 14 over 18r squared. And that's it, right? There's nothing we can factor out of the numerator um, since 15 and 14 don't have any common factors, so we're done. So see, most of the work is really just getting uh, the least common denominator. And we are going to see that over and over in these other examples. So number 10, um, well, at least here, the denominators are already factored, right? I guess vacuously, since they can't be factored from where they are. So that would mean that the least common denominator is just going to be the product of them. So it would just be x minus 2 times x plus 3, which means that we'd have to multiply that first rational expression by x plus 3 over x plus 3, multiply the second one by x minus 2 over x minus 2 to get where we need to go. So let's see here. We're going to have x plus 5 over x minus 2. And we've got to get x minus 2 times x minus 3, so we're missing the x, or times x plus 3, so we're missing the x plus 3. All right, that means we've got to multiply by x plus 3 over x plus 3. And then we're going to be adding x minus 1 over x plus 3. And then this one we've got to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2 to get the least common denominator. All right, then let's see. What we're going to have to do is we can multiply um, those two numerators. And let's see, x plus 5 times x plus 3, you get x squared plus 8x plus 15. I guess if you FOIL it, you get x squared plus 3x plus 5x plus 15. But we might as well go ahead and simplify that. Um, I'm not going to simplify or like like multiply the um, denominators. I'm going to leave those as x minus 2 over x plus 3 because on the off chance that we're able to simplify further after we do the adding, then that way the denominator is already factored. So then that way you don't have to do it twice. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. Um, and then if we multiply x minus 1 x minus 2, we're going to get x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then same denominator, x minus 2 times x plus 3. And then from there, we can add the numerators. So if we add those, we're going to get 2x squared plus 5x plus 17. If you combine like terms, and that'll be over x minus 2 times x plus 3. And then we just have to check and make sure we can't simplify any further. But we couldn't. Um, because in order to get that plus 17 on the end, um, 17 is prime. So either, um, like if you could factor the top, it would have to be either a 17 and a 1 or a negative 17 with a negative 1. And to get that positive middle term, it would have to be 17 and a 1. And there's no way you could get the middle term that close to 0 with a 17 being involved, right? So that is the answer because the top doesn't factor. All right, let's see. Now, how about one with binomials, but a little bit more involved than just where you have a binomial by itself as the denominator. So there are going to be binomials in this, but we are actually going to have to factor this time and do a little bit extra. So x squared minus 16, that's the difference of two squares. So that's x plus 4 times x minus 4. Lost the ability to write. There we go. And then x squared plus 5x plus 4. We can write that as x plus 4 times x plus 5, or times x plus 1, rather. That will give us the 5 in the middle. All right, so then with those two, it looks like our least common denominator. Um, the x plus 4 shows up twice, but it's always to the first power. So we would need the x plus 4 to the first power. And then there's also an x minus 4 in the first one, 
and an x plus one in the second, so we need all three of those. Um, but we're not really gonna have to make too much of an adjustment here, actually. It looks worse than it is, because we can rewrite that first rational expression as x minus six over x plus four times x minus four. So there in the denominator, we're just missing the x plus one. So then we're gonna multiply by x plus one over x plus one. And then we are going to subtract five over x plus four times x plus one. And the only thing we're missing from that denominator is the x minus four. So then we're gonna multiply the top and bottom by x minus four. And let's see, now I guess um, I'll rewrite both of these a little bit. So we'll have x minus six times x plus one over that denominator of x plus four times x minus four times x plus one, and then minus, and then for the second rational expression, if we do the multiplication here, we'll have five times x minus four over, same denominator, x plus four, x minus four, and x plus one. All right, so now we can, let's see, we can foil that numerator on the left side um, so I'm going to do the multiplication and combining it into one giant rational expression in the same step. This one I think is long enough as it is, even with me doing that. But we'll have x squared minus 5x minus 6, and then minus what we get in that numerator. So I'm going to put this in brackets um, just to make sure we subtract the whole thing. And if you distribute the 5, it would be 5x minus 20. But make sure you subtract that whole numerator. And then this is all gonna be over x plus four times x minus four times x plus one. And then I guess distribute the negative and see what we can simplify. So x squared minus five x minus six minus five x and then plus 20 since it's minus a negative 20. And then that will be over x plus four times x minus four times x plus one. And I think we can simplify that a little bit. I'll just do it over to the right because I'm not sure if I got enough room in the bottom. But we'll have x squared minus 10x plus 14 over x plus four times x minus four times x plus one. And that's it because the top does not factor. Um, if you have a pair of factors of 14 that add up to a negative in the middle, you know, um, you get close, right? Negative seven and negative two would add up to negative nine, but there's not a way that you can get negative 10. So that's the final answer. All right, let's see. Next, um, we got another subtraction one. Um, I think this one, it looks a little bit different um, than what we've had before, but it's still like, it's not, it's not too different, but it's a little bit different. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get a common denominator before we do anything else. So let's see then, 2a squared minus 8a, that's got a common factor of 2a. So we can factor that out and we'll have 2a times a minus four, and then a squared plus a minus 20. If you factor that, you're gonna get a plus five times a minus four. All right, so then our least common denominator. Um, everything's showing up to a, a first power, right? Two to the first power, a to the first power, a minus four to the first power in both of them, a plus five to the first power. So I'm gonna write it with the monomial first. So basically I'm just gonna write the, the first factorization and then multiply by a plus five. That'll cover it, all right? That gets everything in there, all the factors that we need. All right, so we're kind of gonna do the same thing that we did in the last one. So three a plus two over, 
I guess I'll write that factored. 2a times a minus 4. And we're missing an a plus 5 in that denominator. So we're going to have to multiply this expression by a plus 5 over a plus 5. And then in the other one, so minus a plus 3 over a plus 5 times a minus 4. Um, there we need a 2a. So we're going to have to multiply by, oh, I changed colors. There we go. 2a over 2a. Um, and then from there, we should be able to put this together. So let's see what we got. Um, I'm going to write this as one giant rational expression all at once. So I'm going to compress this as much as I can. So 3a plus 2 times a plus 5, and then minus from the second numerator, 2a times a plus 3. It looks weird to me if I don't write the monomial first. I know it's on the right side over here, but I don't know. That's it's a weird quirk that I have, I guess. And then the denominator would be 2a times a minus 4 times a plus 5. And then, let's see, we got a foil, and then we got to distribute a 2a and distribute a negative, so be careful with that. Um, let's see, how much room do I have? A little bit. So let's see, if we foil, that's going to be 3a squared plus 17a plus 10. And then minus, I guess I can put this in brackets, 2a squared plus 6a. And then this is all going to be over 2a times a minus 4 times a plus 5. And then I can distribute that negative, and I kind of have to go over here to do it. So you'd have 3a squared plus 17a plus 10 minus 2a squared minus 6a. And that's all going to be over 2a times a minus 4 times a plus 5. Um, let's see, then if you combine like terms, you get a squared plus 11a plus 10 over 2a times a minus 4 times a plus 5. The top factors, but it doesn't give you anything that cancels. So like you can factor the top because the pair of factors of 10 that add up to 11 would be 10 and 1. So you can do it. And you can say, well, this will be a plus 1 times a plus 10 over 2a times a minus 4 times a plus 5. And now everything's factored all the way down, but we just can't cancel anything. So this is actually what the answer looks like since we're not able to cancel anything out. All right, so that one a little bit different, um, I guess, since you could you could factor the end, but then it doesn't go anywhere. You have no idea how much trial and error it took to get a problem where that actually worked. Um, I have four pages of scrap paper just trying to get this one thing where the numerator would do that. But I eventually got one. So um, that was the one variation I wanted to get in here. Um, 13, um, in a way, this looks like it's going to be intense because now it's three expressions, right? That makes it feel like it's going to be intense. But the least common denominator is pretty easy because when you look at what's there, you go, I see a difference of squares, and I also see the two factors of the difference of squares. So it's not too bad, um, especially because then if our least common denominator is going to be y squared minus 1, which it is, then it looks like for that last rational expression, the one with the 14, the numerator, you don't have to adjust it to get the least common denominator, right? Because you already have it. So that's nice. But we are going to have to make adjustments to the other two. So we're going to end up with 7y over y plus 1, and we need to get a y squared minus 1, so we need the conjugate. So I guess that means we're going to multiply by y minus 1 over y minus 1. And then we're going to have plus 
over y minus one, but we need a y squared minus one, so we gotta multiply by the conjugate. So times y plus one over y plus one. And then the last one, you don't have to do anything because you already have the least common denominator there, the y squared minus one. So that one's just what it was. Um, then we gotta do a little bit of multiplication here. So we're gonna end up with 7y times y minus 1 over y plus 1 times y minus 1, and then plus 8 times y plus 1 over y plus 1 times y minus 1. And then I am going to write this as 14 over a factored denominator. So y plus one times y minus one, just in case, right? Just in case at the end, if there's something that we can factor, then this way it'll be easier to see. Um, all right, so I guess I'm gonna distribute the seven y, distribute the eight, and combine all three numerators together all at once. So we'll get seven y squared minus seven y plus eight y plus eight, right? So the eight y plus eight comes out of that second numerator, and then minus 14. And then this is going to all be over y plus 1 times y minus 1. And let's see, if we combine terms in the numerator, we're going to get 7y squared plus y minus 6 over y plus 1 times y minus 1. And I guess if you don't see right away that that could factor, you could always try the rainbow and see if you could break it up, because if you can do that, it'll factor. Um, so let's see, you need a pair of factors of negative 42 that adds up to 1, 7, and negative 6. That thing factors. So I'm just going to do it with the factorization here, and you'd have to have a 7y and a y to get a 7y squared, since 7 is a prime number. And let's see, we need a plus 1 in the middle, so let's see, that would mean we'd need a... Hmm. It looks like we are going to need a plus six and a minus. Oh no, I got it backwards. I'm getting a minus one in the middle. Um, so this should be a plus, and then that one is a minus. That's it. Yeah, because then you get seven y minus six y. That'll do it. And then that'll be over y plus one times y minus one. Oh look, we have things that we can cancel. So we got a y plus one in the numerator, we got a y plus one in the denominator, and they're both parts of products, so we can cancel them out. And then what we're gonna end up with as a final answer is gonna be seven y minus six over y minus one. And there we go. All right, so that one, um, it looks like it's going to be worse than it is because you've got the three expressions instead of two, right? And it feels like that should be more work. But because the, um, the denominators were easier to handle, right? Like to get the common denominator um, wasn't going to be anything insane, then it actually ends up being kind of short. And we end up with a nice simplified down answer since we could cancel stuff out. Um, but that, I think, would cover all the addition and subtraction stuff for rational expressions in 5.2. The biggest thing is the least common denominator. If you can get the least common denominator, you can do all the addition and subtraction, right? So I think that's the biggest thing to focus on here.